There is this window from about 1957 to mid-1960 where uh, we have discovered that's one of our most dangerous periods for loss of color imagery in uh, color negative. When it was discovered that Pollyanna's negative had this color collapse, which within a very few years began to lose color dye. Walt Disney, I think, was the first of the Hollywood producers to really appreciate what television could be and what it meant to the, to the afterlife of his films. I think he knew that he was making films that would be evergreens and be perennials. And he proved that with his television show starting in the mid-50s through the wonderful world of color in the 60s, where many of these films did find new secondary audiences. Movies in the old days were seasonal. They were like a newspaper or a magazine. They came to your town, they opened, they played for a week, and they left. Then television came along, and slowly these libraries of the great Hollywood films became great fodder to fill programming. That in itself had been a surprise to Hollywood. And when they realized that the libraries of films that had been lying dormant for years, suddenly they could sell them to new audiences on television, well, that was kind of a interesting wake-up call. And suddenly today, they have a, a, a new penetration through cable television, through DVD, home video, satellite television. Pictures that we grew up with as kids have surprised us by becoming evergreens and perpetuals. And we're finding that we enjoy revisiting these pictures from our childhood as much as our children and our grandchildren love discovering these films. And so an old picture like Pollyanna has a whole new lease on life worldwide all these years later. It's rather remarkable. When movies that were shot on motion picture film have to be broadcast or put onto video, they have to be transferred to that medium, and there's an interface called a telecine, which is a machine that reads the film like a scanner. A little bit of work has to be done to clean them up, usually going back to your best original elements and reprinting, refurbishing, cleaning them. And with the advent of today's sophisticated film-to-tape machines, we're finding that if you can restore a film from its original elements, both picture and sound can look as fresh often better than a film that was just made last month. When I came to the studio in 1991, we were in the middle of a preservation and restoration program to prepare the bulk of the Disney films and shorts for the first big wave of home video. Pollyanna was one of the first films I worked on, and that's when it was discovered that there had been severe fading of the negative. And to, before we go into that, we should talk about how film imaging is made. Color does brighten things up, doesn't it? When Technicolor made the breakthrough with the first three-color process, I wanted to cheer. Flowers and Trees was the first full-color film to hit the motion picture screen. It made quite a splash. Prior to the early 1950s, if you wanted to make a, a color movie in Hollywood, you had to pretty much use the Technicolor process, which was wonderful, but very expensive and cumbersome, because the camera was the size of a motorboat, and it had three rolls of film that ran through it, a lot of lighting equipment to light up the sets and the actors. To explain this, maybe we should step back into Pollyanna. There's a wonderful moment where Mr. Prendergast shows Jimmy Bean how the prisms work. You see the shape of this crystal? That is a prism. The light is stripped by that angle, that refracts the ray, splits the colors, diffuses them at an oblique angle, and bends it out into a dispersed color band. You understand? What he means is, the sun comes through here and paints a rainbow, you see? Prism is a piece of cut glass that has the ability to take the white light of nature and divide it into the three primary colors, which are red, blue, and green. Once you have these three primary colors of red, blue, and green, you can mix them and create every color known to man, every value in between, purples, yellows, aqua, rose. They're all because of these three primaries. And that's the basis of all photography and all vision in the human eye. Um, motion picture film in the old Technicolor days had three black and white films that ran that captured the light images of those three primary colors because the white light went through a prism. 
and sent those divided rays to the three black and white films inside the housing. The other component of the classic Technicolor system was their printing process, which transferred color dyes, red, blue, and green, or yellow cyan magenta dyes, which are the complements of the red, blue, green primary colors. And those are the dyes that are then used in printing with colored light. They're like uh, three different negatives all together, all atop each other, onto a release print to give it near positive. Color Negative, when it came along, took that idea and put the three films on one strip of film and essentially contained three layers on one where it is a chemical dye. So a film like Pollyanna would not have been shot with that old cumbersome three-strip camera. It would have been shot with a color negative. You could shoot with half as much light. And that was a great thing for cameramen. It freed them up, gave them more flexibility. What we did not know at the time was that the price of that extra bit of speed was a less stable color negative. And the chemical dyes are the ones that have more propensity to fade. And as a result, many, many films from that era that have severe color fading today. Oh, my God. There was no reason to discover the condition of Pollyanna's negative until the restoration was undertaken in 91. And that's when it was discovered that there had been severe fading to the yellow dye layer of the negative. And you can see that all the whites have taken on a warm yellow hue to them. The flesh is too warm. The shadows are beginning to open up and give kind of a bluish purple color. And there's no way you can conventionally print this and offset those color losses. One thing that Disney's always done to protect these negatives would be to make silver separation protection masters when the films were new. Through a process of separating out those three layers photographically to printing matrices. This means you print through a color filter a record of each of the three primary colors for the full length of the film. These are the separation masters, and these do not fade like the dyes of the original negative or prints. So in theory, these materials will survive two, 300 years even, and will yield a color that is very similar to the original. Not bad, is it? It's not bad at all. When we go about retrieving the color from the separation masters, you go from the blue master and retrieve back from that with a blue filter, and you retrieve back from the green master with a green filter, and you retrieve back from the red master through a red filter to a new piece of color negative that reproduces the color as it was originally intended. And so when it was discovered that Pollyanna's negative had this color collapse, that's indeed what we did was to pull up the 1960 separation masters, and that's when we discovered yet another fly in the ointment. The masters were printed back, and uh, some very strange things happened. Haley Mills' blue eyes were now exorcist green. Her black patent leather shoes had a mossy green tinge to them. Lipstick turned orange, and people's faces were sort of yellow. And some very odd things happened to those yellow gift boxes when they paraded them out to the car. It was quite obvious something was wrong. There was one reel where we didn't have a green record or magenta master. We only had two blue records uh, and one red record. The reason for this apparently was that somebody forgot to change the filter and thought they were shooting a green record and actually ended up shooting two blue records. We tried something very unorthodox in lab convention, which was to take the faded camera negative and try to create a new black and white master positive of the green so that we could marry it back with the two records made in 1959. Fortunately, the green layer was in pretty good condition on the original negative, so we were able to re-register that color and make a new separation positive of green information and register it to the other blue and red records and bring about a reasonably good internegative. So we successfully did create that. We now have color back on a normal scale. The clerk's black dress suit is black. Haley's dress is white. Her eyes are their proper blue. Her blonde hair is its proper color. You don't have any of the false, funky colors that we were seeing from the original masters or the corrupted color that's plus yellow in the camera negative. If there was any lesson I learned as a film preservationist in restoring Pollyanna, it was to always check preservation materials when you make them. 
don't make them assume they're correct and put them away to let the next guy worry about them or uh, or the next century worry about it. It's kind of like not checking your babysitter's references before you have her come over for the evening and leave your children with her. Come on, come on, don't dawdle. There's a lot of work still to be done to preserve these films. Disney and most Hollywood studios really support the restoration of their film libraries. There are a lot of compelling reasons why we want to keep our films. They're part of us. They are a document for what we thought, what we wore, where we were going and where we were. We love stories, and if we don't take care of the physicality of these films in the long haul, by keeping them well, storing them well, working on them periodically, we do run a risk of having them survive in less than optimum quality, or in the worst cases, being lost altogether. We want to see Pollyanna the way David Swift and Walt Disney told it, and the way Haley Mills played it. If Pollyanna were to be lost, we'd be a little bit poorer.